five five. Saint Peter five five. Likewise ye younger submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subjection one to another, be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. Let us pray. Father, we love you and we thank you tonight. God, we just ask you to move on our behalf. Lord, you see the ones here, and that's the ones you want to hear this voice message with, with the ones on Facebook. God, we welcome them. But, Lord, we pray right now, whether they're here or there, you just touch them and minister to them, and we give you praise and honor for it all. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Let's go to verse 6 there, my friend. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Hello? Humble yourself, bow down, worship. I like to worship, come on. I see these movies and they, they bow down and worship to the king. And they, In the Bible days, if you didn't do that, you was a goner. Hello. But he said, worship him or bow down yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. How many knows God's got a mighty hand? One writer said, if I make my bed in hell, he's there. That means his hands there. Come on, church. And if I can submit myself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt me in due time. Hello? He's going to show me off. That's my lingo. Exalt. Brag on you. How many likes to be bragged on? Don't be ashamed. Raise that hand. Lord, I like to be bragged on. I mean, my wife loves to be bragged on. I brag too much, she said, what you want? <laughs> but I want, to, I want to submit myself to God is what I'm trying to say. And at the time that I need him, he's going to exalt me at that time. Hello? Oh, y'all missed a good place to say amen now. If I submit myself under the mighty hand of God, then what I need him most, Pastor Linda, he's going to exalt me and not only exalt me, but he's going to do it in front of everybody. Hallelujah! I'm excited about that. When everybody counts you out, God counts you up. Woo, I like that. When everybody else puts you down, God said, I'll lift you up higher than any mountain. Come on, church. When the doctor says there's no hope, God said, I am your hope. And he will exalt you in due time. That means the time that you need it. The time you need it. Well, I don't know about some of y'all, but I need it right now. And I found out he's a right now God. Right now. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. When you need him right now, he's a right now God. Yeah. Yeah. All you got to do is start worshiping him, bow down to him, honor him. Yeah. Yeah. Love on him. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I, I started seeing all kinds of things in here. Just humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He's, the, he's your shelter. Huh? He's that shade tree when you need it. Mighty hand means strengthen or power. He's a mighty, he's a mighty God. How many knows he's a mighty God? I mean, I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for him. Now, I, I, I'm fixing to celebrate 50 years in the ministry, a legacy. And all the people that I knew back in the day said, he'll never last. I mean, I was a young 23-year-old. And, 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 
And, and then every year, I didn't think you'd make it this far. And some of us done passed on and went on to wherever they was going. And I say it that way because some of them wasn't living right. But there's some that was, but they passed on. And, and every time I would see one of them say, I can't believe you're still preaching. Yeah. It's because I found something in God yeah. that I couldn't find in the world. Yeah. He said, I'm the God that heals thee. He's the God that saves you. He's the God that delivers you. Yeah. It may look bad to you and everybody else, but if you trust in God, yeah. he'll be your shining light. Come on, church. Hallelujah. But you got to do that one thing. You got to humble yourself. I'm humbling God. Now, this is the part I want to get to. He said, Casting all your cares on Him. For He careth for you. Hallelujah. I can't say no more about that. I mean, you're just casting all your cares. Y'all know how much all is? That's everything. Even if you think it's not big enough to give it to God, he said, I want it all. Church, casting all your cares upon him. It's yours, God. But our, as human beings, we give it to God, and we're Indian givers. We take it back. <laughs> well, God, you didn't, you didn't do this quick enough. I guess I'm going to have to run to the bank now. Hello. I know none of y'all have never been there. Lord, you haven't saved my kids yet. I don't know what's that wrong with you. My oldest brother, my dad, never saw my oldest brother saved, but he kept telling, you're going to get saved. Yeah. My dad passed, you know, my brother's in and out, but he's mostly out, but he, he finally came in. Yeah. It was after my dad's death, and he regretted it because he wanted his dad to see him. Look at me, dad, I'm serving God. Yeah. And I have to say he served God to the day he left here. Yeah. Hallelujah, church. Total change around. But casting your cares upon him. Cast it. Throw it. Here, God, take it. Now, I used to do some fishing younger days. Some fishing. And Brother Larry, they used them cast nets. I never know good at it. But you'd have to get that rope in your mouth, and you better turn loose of it, or it's going to jerk you in the water. But you got to cast it out there. You know, when you cast it out, you don't know if there's fish there or not. That's what Jesus is saying, cast it and see if I won't answer you. Because I care for you. He said, cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. Sister Linda, you can't beat that. God said, I care for you. I care for you. Let me say it again. I care for you. All you got to do is just give me your problem. Give me your situation. Give me your health, your wealth. Give me all of it, and I will take care of it. We put money in the bank for them to take care of it. Hello? All my life, I thought if you had a savings account, you made money on it, but now I found out they take money all that. I said, you're taking more than you're giving me. <laughs> well, we gave you $30, but we're going to take nine. <laughs> so they took $60. I didn't make nothing, but they said, we gave you. Mm -hmm. It's like giving it to you and taking it back, but I got news for you. God will never take it back. He said he would, he would honor it, press down, shaking together, and running over. Somebody needs to praise God there a little bit. I want that running over. Hallelujah. Amen to God. You know, the old timers, uh, the old timers, they used to pour their coffee. You know, when they poured the coffee, they overfilled the cup and poured in the saucer. And that one guy sings that song, uh, uh, Drinking from My Saucer. Hey, man, come on, church. He was drinking the overflow. 
Y'all missed a good place to say it. Am I going to have to get out here and sit and holler amen too? <laughs> Casting all your care. Now, this, this is Peter talking. How many know God cares for you? And this is what he said. If you'll do this, he said, be sober. Be watchful. That's what that means. Be watchful. I mean, you know, too many drunk people don't know what they're doing. Come on, any. I mean, I, I've seen a lot of drunk people, and they, they stagger. And sometimes they can't remember what they did or didn't do. But this, the writer said, be, be sober, be watchful, be discreet. Hallelujah. Be vicious. I can't even say it. In other words, be awake. How many wants to be awake? I want to know. I, 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 I like to know when God's going to bless When I ask for a blessing, I'm looking for it. I, I'm going to watch for it, and I'm, I'm going to be awake. Hello, church. Sometimes we ask for blessings, and then we just fall asleep on it. We forget about it. But when I'm asking God for something, I want God, I want Him to answer, so I'm going to watch it. He said, watch and see if I'm not the God that heals you. Hello, church. I mean, some of us lived some pretty rough lives, and thank God we got saved. I told Jeannie, I said, if I hadn't got saved, I'd probably been dead or in prison, the way I was leading going. I mean, when a man's standing there with a pistol in you, say, you look at him and say, go ahead and shoot me if you want to, but you better hit me. That's crazy. Probably wouldn't have done if I was sober. <laughs> I got older and wiser, I'm going to tell you all. But Jeannie's mother one time, a man pulled a gun on her and said, I, I'll, I'll shoot you, I'll kill you. And she looked at him and said, well, go ahead. I'll go to heaven then. And if you don't, I'm still going to church. She was praying for him. But he's saying, be sober, be watchful, be vigilant, be awake. Hello? Amen. Your adversary, and he even tells us who he is. Amen. Your adversary, you're the devil, your enemy. Come on, church. Satan, that false accuser. I like it when he says he's a false accuser. It means it's not true. I tell you, the devils had really, really fought you and, and telling you people things about you. You know, and if they listen, they're not of God. He's a false accuser. Your adversary, the devil. <laughs> the devil. Your enemy. And he, he, he's desiring. And the Bible says, as a roaring lion makes a whole lot of noise. And they tell me, I've never seen it or never been in the jungle where a woman was at. But they said when that lion roars, all the animals shake. Makes a lot of noise. A roaring lion. One of the worst beasts was in the Bible days. One of them, I said. He's, he's making a lot of noise out there. Ain't it funny? The devil makes noise when he's coming after you. People say, oh, the devil's been on my back. Get him off. 
Something gets on my back and I don't want it. I'm going to get it off. Hello? I've had things get on my back. I mean, I'll run up against a wall to get it off my back. I remember... <laughs> it's a scary thing. But I remember a bat got on my back one time. Man. <laughs> Woo! I got to get this thing off. <laughs> Boom, I fall on the floor. <laughs> Just get it off. That's what I'm saying. You can get it off. But be sober, be a vision. Your adversary, your enemy is out there as a roaring lion seeking me, whom he may devour. He wants to eat you up. He don't want you to praise God. He don't want you to testify. He don't want you to be blessed. He don't want you to be healed. He don't want you to be delivered. He wants you just to stay down, weak down and say, oh, the devil's tearing me up. The devil's eating me. But thank God I found out he's just a roaring lion. Not a lion, but he roars like one. Amen. And God said, I'll make a way out. Well, they seem to be no way. Lord, how am I going to do this? I hear him coming. I don't know where he's coming, but I know he's coming. You see, I found out I know the devil's coming. He's coming to attack me. Because the Bible says that he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come to give you life and more abundantly. Yeah, yeah. Press down, shaking together and running over. That's the God. The devil don't promise that. The devil promised he's going to destroy or kill. Take what you got. But God said, I'm going to bless him. Just all you got to do is stay awake and watch for me and I will bless you. Seeking whom he may devour. Put a hedge around me, God. Put a big fence around me. Put a border against me. I like that song that, and, and like the word says, leap over the wall and run through a troop. That's us. And all the devil can do is come to the wall. Hello? And if we open the door to him, guess what? Hello? Devour you means to swallow you up. He don't want you praying to God, worshiping. He doesn't even want you to come on Wednesday nights. Why should I go Wednesday? Nobody's hardly there. I'm here. You're here. Some of my greatest revival have been with two or three people. Huh? Come on, church. I, I know a lot of times us preachers, we get feelings hurt if a lot of people don't come and they don't make a lot of noise. Hello? That's when we're younger. We get older. We just want to be in the presence of God. I know this brother Robert came in. He got out there in the hallway, and he just started praying. Hello? I didn't ask him what he was praying for, but I, 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 I believe he's praying for the church and the service. Maybe he's saying, devil, you got to go. You've been on my back all day. Finally got him off. We don't have to carry him around. Verse 9. Verse 9. Whom resisteth steadfast in the faith. Hello? In the faith. Into the Lord. <laughs> Knowing that the same afflictions 
Hello? Same suffering that you're going through. It says accomplish that your brothers that are in the world are going through it too. Other churches is going through what this church goes through. Other Christians going through what you're going through. You're not the only one. Hello? I'm not the only preacher who ever had car problems. You're not the only one who ever had financial problems. But I heard the testimony. I knew that, that they said, I'm blessed. Even the freezer's full. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can't say that about my freezer. <laughs> it was full. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're so blessed that, you know, people come over, we give them stuff. You know, here, here, bless. Let me bless you. <laughs> told, my, told my sister I was gone. I said, look in the freezer and you'll find a big old steak in there. Take it home and cook it. It's about 18 ounces, so take it home. You and your husband split it because they don't eat much anyway. Why would you do that? Because I wanted her to be blessed. Hello? I don't know about y'all, but steak's rare in my house. <laughs> but think about it, church. The brethren, the church is going through the same thing we have. They have heartaches. They have sickness. They have death. We need to hold them up. Can somebody say amen? They're, they're, they're suffering just like we are. Just like we are. But the God of all grace, hallelujah. I like the word grace because that word there means favor. Of all the favor, I mean, he's got favor with God. I hear people all the time say, said, I'm highly blessed and got favor with God. I got favor with God. That means I can go to him and ask for something, he's going to give it to me. Some people has favor with their boss person. Start to say boss man, but there are some women out there as boss, bossy. <laughs> Bossy. There's a boss and there's a bossy. <laughs> Just tell it like it is. <laughs> Honey, I didn't say you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I look at her and say, you know, I'm not your kid. <laughs> and then she'll look at me and say, you know, I'm your, your wife, <laughs> not your child. We have fun in our house. <laughs> I'm going to tell on her. I taught her how to do something. We was working on her house, and I taught her how to do it, taught her how to cut the board, bloom, bloom, bloom. Now she thinks I don't know how to do it. I said, who taught you? You did, but you don't know how to do it. <laughs> okay, darling. What's that got to do with bossy? Nothing. But what I want to get to you is that, but God of all grace, favor, who has called us unto his eternal glory. I mean, what's that? Internal, forever. Glory, honor, praise, and worship. God's called us to do that. Just to praise him. And I, I've watched some of y'all, and Sister Linda, I, I've watched her. She'll come to church, and she'll just start praising God. Hello? Seems like the singers got to pump us up and get us there. And that's part of their job, is to get us into worship. But he, but he said, be of good grace who has called into eternal glory by Christ Jesus, not by yourself, 
by Christ Jesus, by the anointed one. Hello, church. I, I just want God to move. I don't know about y'all, but I, I really feel this thing tonight. And after that, he has suffered your feelings. You know, suffering to feelings. You, your feeling gets hurt. If you got pain in your body, you feel the pain. Come on, church. And as pastors, they feel the grief and the pain of the congregation. And that's the reason sometimes, Sister Linda, we woke up in the middle of the night praying for somebody in the church, and they don't know it. But that, that's the part of God in us, that grace that we have, that favor with God, that God can trust us to pray for somebody else. I love it when people tell me, we pray for y'all all the time. Thank God that you do. Come on, church. We couldn't do what we did if people didn't pray. But here he is. He's telling us. After that you have suffered a while, it has made you perfect. Restored you, what that word means. Join you together. Y'all seen that, that movie um, oh, where the car turns in to be a big guy? <laughs> Transformers. That's what God's done to us. He's transforming from a sinner to a child of God. The only thing is, I ain't never turned back to that dude bug. <laughs> now I'm a mighty man of devour, vir, vir, whatever you call it, Gene. Valley, there you go. How do you see yourself? I see myself as a servant of God. Because I have humbled myself under the hand of God. And when I done that, I said, God, I'm yours. You lead me, guide me. Come on. Hello, church. Sometimes we're driving down the road, and before we ever leave, we ask God to lead us and guide us. And when we mess a road or something, I don't get aggravated. I just say, well, there must have been something going to happen. We'll turn around, you know, go where we Why well, used to get mad. God, I was talking to her, not God. <laughs> GPS is saying, turn right, turn right. <laughs> I mean, that's another story on me. Jeannie said, it says turn right and you turn left. I said, it's my other right. <laughs> It'll be right when I turn back around. <laughs> but, but the Lord is saying this. But be a God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory by Jesus Christ. You know, we got the adversary, which is the devil. Now we're being led by Jesus, the glory of Jesus. After that, ye have suffered a while had made you perfect. And people says you can't be perfect, but I've been restored to new again. Somebody does restoring furniture and restoring cars. They make it look like most of the time they restore it. They make it look like it did when it came out of the showroom floor or just came out. Come on. We didn't change nothing. We just made it look the same but put it back together. When I used to deal with used furniture, I, you know, buy it and it'd be shaking and wobbling. I'd start tightening it up, putting screws in it and different things and painting it and made it look brand new again. Hallelujah. See, when you're poor, we had to do that. I remember one time we had a house full of furniture we, that, we, that come outside the road. Oh, y'all got quiet. I know I ain't the only one who used to do that. I know some people right now that'll stop if they see some furniture. <laughs> oh, look at that. That looks good. <laughs> I ain't calling no names. <laughs> because we see something else in it. And they saw trash, but we saw something else. And thank God that God's seen something else in us. Somebody else might have seen this as nothing, but God said, I'll make something out of you. 
Hey, man, all you got to do is humble yourself and worship me and praise me, and I'm going to lead and guide you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to, whatever you need, I'm going to give you favor. And, and, and if you got favor, then I'm going to restore you to right back to your per per perfect in the image of me. Come on, church. Hallelujah. If you're walking in God, you've got to be perfect because he was perfect. Now, when you get in yourself, you may not be so perfect. Established means being strengthened. How many has been strengthened in the word of the Lord? Steadfast. Set to fix. Hallelujah. I've been strengthened now. <laughs> strengthened. Mighty. I'm more than an overcomer. Can I get somebody to say amen on that? Are you, you're more than overcoming. You showed up. That's what I say when people look at me and say, I never thought you'd made it. I'm more than overcomer. Some of y'all are more overcomers because your family and your friends thought you'd never make it. They seen you have other, seen you got into different things and you quit. Come on, church. Strengthen, establish, strengthen. Settle with you. Word settle means grounded, founded. How many founded in the Word of God? I've always told people, they say, I, I, I don't read good and I don't do that. I said, get you some tapes. Back when they had tapes, I said, get you tapes and listen to it. Follow along with it. Get the CDs. Come on, church. Hallelujah. You can get a Bible on your app now and it'll, it'll read to you. Thank God. Sometimes I got to go there and see how they pronounce a word. And then I forget how they did it anyway and I just look at her. I say, if you see me struggling up there on a word, tell me what it is. Now I know why some of the preachers have somebody else to read for them. But be strong in the Lord. Be, be settled in it, grounded. Pastors tell you all the time, let's get rooted and grounded. If you get rooted and grounded, then you can grow. Paul and Apollos, Apollos said some waters, some teals. Come on, church. And, but it's God that gives the increase. Some of you sitting here tonight because you have grown in the Lord. You're not the still baby Christian that you used to be. Now when the devil comes up, you start talking to the devil instead of running to the pastor. Well, I didn't get no amen. It's not bad to run to your pastor, but sometimes they rooted and ground you into words. You can stand up and say, I take authority over my house. This is my house. And we swept it and cleaned it for God. Because I bumbled myself under the hand of God. Hallelujah. And as long as the children of Israel had their hand, like mine, on, who stayed on God, they, He led them through there with no situation. But as soon as they start wondering their mind and wondering, wanting to see it a little bit, God said, okay, you're not for me. I can't be for you. But as soon as they started calling on His name, When they hold, held Moses' his hand up, as long as their hand was held up, they won the battle. But as soon as they come down, they lost. I don't know about you, but I want God to hold my hand up that I'll win this battle. Come on, church. Hallelujah. That enemy, your adversary, somebody's coming against you. I like what Ephesians says. You're not, you're not fighting flesh and blood, but you're fighting principalities and high places, dark places, spiritual weakness. That's as Christians, that's what we fight. And the enemy don't want us to worship God. In other words, and, and another thing, the enemy does not want you to prosper. 
Don't want you to be in good health. When I, when I, when I got hurt, I, I, I started finding every healing scripture I could find. Every one of them. And I started reading them. Even if it did contain to what I had, if it was a healing scripture, I quoted it. Because I knew the God that I served. I didn't need salvation. I had it. I needed a healer. And thank God that God, God answered prayer. Because what the, some of the therapists and some of the doctors said, they said, this, you'll, you'll have this problem, you'll have that problem. I ain't, I ain't had none of those problems. One doctor, when he set my leg, tried uh, to make it straight again. They told me, he said, now, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. He said, now, are you ready? Yeah. And he said it. He said, didn't that hurt? No. Did you feel it? Oh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> he said, man, I've had guys in here. That was 250 pounds, six foot eight, screaming like babies when we did that to them. I said, brother, it's just a God thing. Hallelujah. It's just a God thing. Oh, hallelujah. Humble yourself. Church, that's personal. Peter said you've got to humble yourself, church. Under God. What house is built on? The sand or the rock? What foundation? I'm built on his foundation. If I'm on his foundation, i got a sure foundation. Hallelujah. I want you to stand with me tonight. Oh, praise your name, Jesus. And I know we all, go, we all go through things. I know Brother Larry Jr. is going through some things. Still believe in God. Larry Sr. is going through things. Still believe in God. Gene and I go through things. We're still believing in God. Because I ain't letting that adversary have the best of me. And I want you to just come up front and let's just pray. And just let's just worship God.